Hey guys, welcome to the Tech Point Africa podcast. My name is Muiwa. My name is Oluwani Femi. And I'm Emmanuel. Did you miss us? We were we, we last week. Only our real fans would have noticed. Right. We were we last week. <laughs> if you didn't miss us, we missed you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're back. We're, we're here. So, we'll just go straight to what we're talking about today because a lot has happened this week. Of course, Thoughts. everybody, they, they thought of many, a lot of talk around Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. That's like the major talking point this week this so far because week. a lot of things happened around all yeah. of that. So, it's, it's been very interesting. So, but before, before we go into all of the, the old, because there's so much going on with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, let's first go into um, Facebook and Twitter trying to eat into mm. Clubhouse. So, Facebook... During the week, there were rumors that Facebook is working on a, an app called Fireside. That is mm. going to be like Clubhouse. Meanwhile, Twitter already released Spaces in 2020, although right. it's very limited. Or, or, uh, or, uh, a few days ago, they increased it to 3,000 more people. But yeah, it's, it's interesting Ooh, because seriously, crypto, who uh, wouldn't? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who, who and, wants to copy co- uh, Clubhouse? Uh, they've made a lot of like covered a lot of grants within how many months? Still running less than in a year. Bet- yes, yeah. less than a year, and they are still running in beta phase, and they have already ba- va- and the, the app is already valued at one billion dollars. Uh, how much have they raised so far? <laughs> yeah, so, it's, who, it's crazy. They've raised at least one and twelve million. No, one hundred and twelve million at least. They've raised at least one hundred and twelve million because okay. they first raised twelve million in mm-hmm. May. So when they raised, th- that was from ad- um, addressing Holowitz. So when they raised 12 million in May, that's when, because they launched a month before that, but that's when like, it started gaining a lot of traction. They raised mm-hmm. 12 million. And uh, and then, just earlier this year, uh, that was January. In January, right? was yes. It? Yeah, January. They raised January. 100 million and they were valued, valued at 1 billion. It's crazy. So As of in, course, Mark Zuckerberg so has I, I don't, Mark Zuckerberg I don't has blame noticed. Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they're all afraid of a... Uh, Competition. Uh, with, uh, yeah. And, and right now, the, the, way, the way Clubhouse just grew in value is just so huge that it's surprising. I'm not sure. First of all, first it's of all, Facebook usually their their tactic is to buy you out or or uh, even now reject the clone you. But yes. two reasons why why Zuckerberg cannot try and buy Clubhouse right now is number one, the way it grew so fast, so the value is like is like overvalued, right? Before. Then secondly, because mm-hmm. Facebook is facing a lot of yeah, antitrust, so they, can't, they can't buy any yeah. Yeah. in America now. Right. So any 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 acquisition they make is going to ad- attract so much more attention to them. So you can't afford right. to do that right now. <laughs> and apart well, from yeah, that, it, it's just as if people have been waiting for something like Clubhouse. Like there's this craving in social media that everybody don't know what exactly it is. But immediately Clubhouse just came to have yes, this is what we've been waiting for. The way people. But I mean, is it new? <laughs> I've never used it, but you know, I don't have an, an I don't uh, use an, an iPhone, iPhone. But is is it is it any different from a Zoom webinar? A Zoom you join a Zoom. I've a, never had an someone, experience. There's before, a panelist. But I think they promised in January that it might be coming to Android. So hopefully. Uh, anyway, I think the major attraction is a lot of celebrities were on it. MC Hammer, uh, Elon Musk was there a well while back. Right. Zuckerberg. So I guess it's that celebrity effect. Anyway, let's mm-hmm. let's move on from that. Before yeah. we still get to the crypto, just let's talk about startups. Uh, a lot of news about startups this week. So, Iroko TV, the Nollywood on demand platform, is rumored to be IPOing, like going in, public in London in 2022. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, Iroko TV is actually listing on the alternative investment market. So, they're not listing on London's main stock exchange. So, uh, the alternative investment market is meant for high growth companies, uh, smaller companies that might not be able to meet the stringent requirements for listing on the main stock exchange. So yeah, Nigerian, the Nigerian stock exchange has a board like that. They call it the, the alternative securities market or the growth board, which they imagined in. Yeah, that was announced last year. Yes, right? yes. January, January last, last year. year. So what's the difference between the main... Um, stock market and the alternative. Okay, so the main mainly it's uh, the entry requirements is usually lower than the yes. Yeah, so okay. the amount you have to pay, the license, and all the paperwork you have to do. Yeah, they're usually the less regulation than. and everything. Mm. So it should make it easier for Eroko to list. Of course, this is not. I mean, two years ago, there were rumors or hints that they were actually planning to list in twenty twenty. 
But of course, then the pandemic happened and they had to lay off staff. And so I guess that delayed it. But now mm-hmm. it seems that they really are planning. But it's still 2022 anyway. It's still right. far. Uh, and I, according to the report, they are looking to raise about 20 to $30 million from the listing from oh. on the alternative market of the London, London Stock Exchange and the valuation of $100 billion after, $100 million, sorry, after the money. Well, interesting. We'll interesting. be watching that. Hopefully. Then, uh, of course, another startup, uh, Connected Analytics, raised, announced yeah. raising funding this yes, week. Yes, yes. They raised seven right? digits uh, pre series funding from uh, Betatron of a VC firm in Hong Kong. And uh, of course, other notable VCs participated in the round. Uh, we had 500 startups and accelerator they got into in 2020, February 2020, almost like a year ago from yeah like mm-hmm. a year ago 500 startups and of course uh predictive and uh, predictive vc and uh accelerates holdings then of course angel investors like craig fenton and brandon drew but Drew is a mentor at 500 startups and uh, craig fenton is a director of google at uh, uk so they said they want to use the funds yeah. to expand their services in nigeria they are striking strategic partnerships with uh, banks like FCMB, Sterling Bank, and Wema Bank. So, yeah, they have a lot of things on their plate. And the service they are offering is uh, they are the parent company of Thank You Cash. So, they are offering like a rewards platform. They want to help brands build your loyalty. So, by the time they keep giving you discounts, they keep giving mm. you points, they keep giving you coupons that you could use to come and buy things on any store. So any store that is connected to the Thank You Cash platform, you could buy anything with the points you get mm-hmm. from that store. So it's actually very, very interesting stuff they are doing. Okay. They said they struck a major partnership with well, one of Africa's bi- uh, biggest fintech companies. No, they, they didn't, didn't mention so did Simeon they? Unobi. It's just like they didn't mention oh, the okay. exact amount they raised. Uh, they didn't mention who the fintech company is, but... Uh, our best guess, or my best guess, is would be InterSwitch, given the kind of reach they have. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be there. Yeah, yeah. So they are not expanding, right, outside Nigeria. Connected an- analytics. Simeon, no, the CEO, no, no, didn't no. say anything about no, expansion. Just this uh, funding. Get adding more quality additions okay. to the team. Yeah, they've pushed staff from KPMG and Jumia, and uh, they want to stay. <laughs> yeah, yeah so <laughs> yeah, they want to add more quality additions to the team. I mean, they have four four, com- four co-founders. Two of them are Indians, and uh, yeah. So with the funding, they want to make sure they add more quality additions to the team that will help them execute on um, the partnership they have with the banks. At least he said one of the banks would give them at least two million customers, and the fintech partner is going to give them at least forty million customers they give them access to 40 million customers so it's basically an expansion play and of course a team strengthening play that's what this fun is about but of course they are also trying to close in on a pre-series a in q2 2021 yeah so this is a pre-series a they are planning to raise a bigger series a hopefully they will announce the amount of that one hopefully (laughs) i was going to mention that something interesting about this startup is the founder and he has is one of those um, few founders that come out to tell the the let's say the failure story of their startup, and he has he has been he has run. I think he was he founded Simple Pay, also a fintech yeah, yeah. startup mm-hmm. that um, died, if that is the word to use, in 2018, and he didn't keep yep. it. He shared lessons from well, uh, lessons he learned from that from running that startup and he has gone ahead to also found this startup and now see how it's going he has raised the pre yeah. series a and it's going yeah, for that very right mm-hmm. we'll, we'll put a link to that uh, story you shared about how simple pay field yeah, simple pay field yeah interesting stuff okay so right. let's move on to the the real mm. talk that everybody's waiting for mm. the <laughs> crypto ban so the central bank of nigeria Job the shocker essentially banned crypto because it's um so it's it's more like uh okay so using the word ban yes. is like i've been talking with some crypto circles and they refuse to use the word banned because cryptocurrency is not illegal in nigeria mm. 
So what? Uh, it is not really. Yeah. So what the CBN did was all these exchanges you are using the buy coins, the bundle, the Binance, the Quidax. They've disconnected it from the entire financial mm-hmm. system in Nigeria. So all the banks, all the fintech companies, your flutter wave, your pay stacks. So basically what it means is that you'll not be able to deposit money into your bundle account right from in Naira. Yeah, right mm-hmm. from your bank account in Naira. Uh, Naira you believe from your Naira from your Naira dominated bank account. Yeah, from a Nigerian yes. bank account. You can't so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, in fact, even just be, besides Naira dominated bank account, as long as, as you're using a Nigerian bank, whether you're having a domiciliary account or a Naira based account, you just don't have access to a crypto exchange in Nigeria. So that's what the CBN said. That was of that's like that's like tantamount to don't just don't transact with cryptocurrency. And you can transact peer to peer. So I have crypto, you have crypto, I share my wallet address. You pay me, but I can't buy crypto with mm. Naira from yeah. my Naira. Nigerian bank account. Uh, you see, the P2P you just mentioned now is actually much riskier because you have to trust the person you are uh, liaising with. Yeah, so the person could actually take your money and give mm. you no crypto, or it could happen the other way around. You could collect crypto and refuse to give the person the money. But of course, a platform like Binance or local Bitcoins, they have this uh, escrow where the seller releases the crypto into an escrow, you transfer the money to the seller's bank account, the seller confirms the payment, and local Bitcoin releases the money to your wallet. So, well, yeah. <laughs> that. Okay, talking about trust, I think that, that it's what not too many crypto traders worry about that at this moment. Because for people that have stayed long in this space, for people that have been trading since as far back as 2016, 2015, they've built a kind of community of people they trust that they trade with. So most of them focus on P2P and they don't, actually, they don't, they don't really need a platform that helps them to escrow payments or mm-hmm. expect people, look for people to trust. But for people that joined uh, as far back as last year, 2020, 2019, which is part of like um, highest number of people that that uh, that's, that answered the survey I put out to crypto trader community. They most of them they got on the platforms that Emmanuel mentioned earlier: the Quidax, the Binance, the Bondu um, apps. So they 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 use those apps. And because most of them have been burnt before. So we expect that the time will come that governments will come to the realization that cryptocurrency has been a way for Nigerian youth to express themselves, so to say, because well, it's 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 a young it's a young population and we cannot lie mm-hmm. our currency is is what do we call it is the value is so, the value keeps decreasing we need we need a kind of it's unfortunate right and we are, the, the banking sector is not even promising so now this is something mm-hmm. that the nigerian youth have gotten their hands on and they are prospering in quotes in it yeah. so we expect the government to be supportive of it but for the meantime while we all come come to grabs with the cbn ban many crypto traders are looking for opportunities to switch to P- p2p meanwhile binance mm. has created another opportunity for for um, for crypto traders to buy with cash in naira i saw um mm. the the release earlier earlier today so binance has also has always been a platform for for p2p also pax boom has also been a platform for p2p so we expect that um crypto traders will move to these platforms or move to the non-conventional platforms like the naira land whatsapp telegram groups i know fully uh, fraud rate doesn't increase during this period of time that people are looking for a way to trade and we're just hoping that all crypto traders will be able to game the system at this point in time yeah okay yeah speaking about government supporting you mentioned government supporting earlier in this in kenya now we are hearing that the central bank of kenya there are rumors or hints that the central bank of the central bank of kenya has announced plans to adopt bitcoin to mm. switch to bitcoin hmm. Nigeria, I see your junior sister. <laughs> yeah, so 
the details of that are a bit murky, but if you read our newsletter this morning, so if I wrote about that, if you didn't see it, check check the website. You see it. So it seems Kenya is trying to adopt or considering yeah. adopting them cryptocurrency. So like Nigeria has a lot to learn. But yeah, there's, like there's a, a lifeline, lifeline in Nigeria. Right? So the right Nigerian now. Senate. So it's not yeah, the it's Nigerian not Senate has group. invited the SEC the, uh, director general of SEC and the governor of the CBN for a hearing. So the Senate is saying, oh. Okay, we understand the risks that comes with cryptocurrency, but we cannot also deny the possible benefits. The fact that, okay, these guys are doing a lot of interesting and innovating stuff with cryptocurrency. So, yeah, there's a statement that struck me. Mm-hmm. A senator from uh, Equity South constituency, uh, Senator Lujimu, he said, we did not mm-hmm. create cryptocurrency and neither can we kill it. So, there is, there is no reason why we should not ensure that this cryptocurrency benefits us. So it's a bas- it's basically uh, the Nigerian Senate saying instead of outright ban, we should actually try to regulate and mm-hmm. make the, uh, bring some kind of sanity into the space. So, but they they understand that okay, both yeah. regulators had their reasons for bringing out uh, their own statement. So, for full disclosure, I don't think I mentioned it before. The Nigerian Securities and Exchange Commission they regulate the capital markets like the stock exchange and all of that. So the SEC actually said they recognize cryptocurrencies as securities. You just have to register it with the commission if you are offering cryptocurrency. So mm-hmm. what the CBN is saying and what the SEC is saying are kind of conflicting. Mm-hmm. So they're inviting both parties to hear them out. And some of the senators are saying, oh, let's also invite the industry stakeholders to, for a public hearing so we can also hear from them. So it's actually a promising conversation that we hope uh, turns out good. And yeah, it's okay. That sounds it's, it sounds promising. That's good. Meanwhile, I mean, with all the global attention that we're getting around uh, Bitcoin, where Tesla bought one point five billion dollars oh, of Bitcoin, that's... has announced plans to accept yes. accepting Bitcoin. So the, it's there's so much uh, global appeal. There's so much global uh, adoption. I think I think it's a good sign that the Senate has called the SEC and the Central Bank of Nigeria to talk. I think I think we'll, we'll be watching and we'll see whether yeah, good things will come out of it. Okay. So before we wrap up, just uh, revisiting the whole Niger- NIN thing, the whole Nigeria identity, identity mm. number thing. What's okay, so the latest so far? Uh, we've gotten is uh, so the latest we've gotten with the NIN is okay. Uh, they've extended the deadline several times and. Uh, different stakeholders in the sector are still calling for more ex- deadline extensions. Then this week, the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Issa Pantami, stated that the NIM replaced the BVN in the banking sector. So whatever you've been using your NIM for, mm. uh, your BVN for, you use it for with the NIN. So looking back at uh, 2014, when the BVN was first created, uh, you will see that the bvn it was everything the nin was supposed to be it's a unique uh, identifier for every uh, subscriber or every bank account holder citizen so but the yeah. nin uh, struggles were just too much since 2007 they've not been sus- able to successfully register up to 60 million people so i think in 2014 the banks had to and the CBN and all the consortium of Nigerian banks decided to create that unique identifier. So now it seems we're coming full circle. It seems that way. And what even struck me is the minister said using a bank account or opening a bank account without NIN in Nigeria is a crime. Like how? <laughs> is it our fault that the NIN was very slow in getting more people to have the, like the processes the, the process of getting yeah. the NIN is yeah. so is it's so crime? stressful they it's, not it's not the one that told Nigerian us to yeah, Nigerians that are not to blame for that terrible yeah but yeah but anyway I mean it makes sense to have just one number that's that is connected yeah. to everything right I mean we have so many numbers in Nigeria you have BVN you have NIN tax you have TIN which is a tax addition number you yeah, have a, which passport, other one? Uh, so many passport them. number PVC number <laughs> you have your voter's card no many numbers ideally you should be able to use just one number or one card for everything uh, yeah, I, I think they were planning a um, unified database at the time that, don't that is still that plan every, that's that happens, <laughs> it happens every four years it happens every four years <laughs> 
Anyway, let's not dwell on that. So yeah, you were yeah. following that and know what's going on. Uh, yeah. So if you are listening for the first time, maybe someone forwarded this to you or shared it. This is the Tech Points Africa podcast. You can get it on um, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, but Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and of course, if you don't like those podcast app, you can go to Podcast or Tech Point on Africa. And don't forget our uh, sister podcast, yep. in Africa, we highlight the best stories of startups and entrepreneurs in Africa. So you can head over, you can get the podcast in all those platforms I just mentioned, and, and head over to Beauty Africa. Yeah, Beauty in South Africa podcast. That one. We'll put the links to everything in the description or episode notes. Parting words, Nifemi. Yes, I hope we are not getting the vibe that Nigeria is about to kill another innovation in Nigeria. I want the, I want us to hold on to hope and hope that this will also not be the end of cryptocurrency platforms in Nigeria. I like that. Hold on to hope. <laughs> so we have to hold on to the hope that. Uh, this is not the end of cryptocurrency this is not the end of innovation and there will always be a room for innovation in nigeria because there are so many problems that need so um, solving thanks for listening i think we'll say goodbye now yeah. don't forget right, the summit. digital currency summit is still holding yes in Ma- march, march 25th, 25th right yeah. and, and we're going to discuss everything around crypto day whether the regulation yeah. what's going yeah. on with the cbn the sec just go to currency. Yeah, dot even, point dot Africa. Oh yeah, yeah. Even Sorry, stuff like stable money. coins, the NGNT that's trending and all of that. We'll be tabling everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is tied to the naira. Yeah. So check it out. Don't miss it. Bye. All right, guys. Bye. Bye.